you know, Sunday nights, on the first Sunday night, we're, <clears throat> we teach on healing. I want to major on one area. I'm not going to keep us real long because, you know, some things you just don't have to spend a lot of time on. Hallelujah. And uh, but let's go in here and let's talk about the fact um, that Jesus is our faithful high priest. Jesus commissioned the church to carry out certain things. In John 20, 21, Jesus said, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. So let's look at a couple of things that Jesus did when he sent them out in Matthew 10, 1. It says, And when he called them unto his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out, and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. And then he says this, Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Now see, it is part of the commission of the Lord Jesus Christ to his disciples, at least at that time, to heal the sick. <clears throat> I don't really understand the mindset that begins to teach that God doesn't heal, that heal, sickness has now become a tool in the hand of God to teach us. When, when Jesus, in his ministry, didn't use sickness as a tool, when Jesus sent the disciples out to heal the sick, amen. And then we have, all, we have also here um, uh, Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, and it says, um, verse 1, after these things the Lord appointed 70 also. So not only did he take him, not only did he take his 12, he took 70 others and sent them two by two before his face into every city place where he would come. That's every city and place where, whether he, he himself would come. And said, therefore, he said unto them, that the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Carry, ne carry neither purse, nor script, nor shoes. Salute no man, by the way. In other words, don't be entangled with anything else with, than what your mission is. Kind of some of what we're talking about this morning, you know, how that, <coughs> we're talking about, <coughs> how that um, the draw of the world will draw you back into the world. Why? Draw you back away from the things of God. It wants to keep you out of your mission. Carnality will keep you out of your call. Okay? It will. If you weren't here this morning, I would encourage you to listen to it. Uh, it, was, it was pretty good. About preach myself happy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And in whatever house you enter, first say, peace be on this house. Let the son of peace be there. Your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall return to you again. And in the same house remain eating and drinking such things as they give. The labor is worthy of his hire. Go now from house to house and whatsoever, and to whatsoever city you enter. And they receive you, eat such things as they set before you. And listen, to what he tells, listen to what he tells them to do. Verse 9. Heal the sick that are, that are therein and say, Heal the sick and say, the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. No. He said healing the sick was a manifestation of the kingdom of God being, in, being present. Heal the sick and say, the kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. Wow. So that means when we're in the presence of the kingdom... Healing is available. It is part of the kingdom of God. Healing for the sick is part of the plan of God for humanity. Amen. So he says here, verse 9, And heal the sick that are therein, and say unto them, The kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. And to whatsoever city you enter, they receive you not, go your ways out into the streets, and the same, and say, Even the very dust of the city which cleaveth to us, we do wipe off against you, notwithstanding. Be sure of this, that the kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. Now, we have the story we've taught many times of how that Jesus went into, the, went into the house, and the Pharisees and doctors of the law from every town round about were present and, and were there, and the Bible says, And the, pow the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And as we study that and we go through that whole teaching or that whole, that whole uh, account, we find out that none of them got healed. Only the guy they brought in tore the roof off and let him down in the midst of them where Jesus saw their faith and said, thy sins be forgiven. And they had that whole theological discussion <clears throat> where they got all upset who could forgive sins but God alone. He said, which is easy to say, thy sins be forgiven thee or to take up that bed and walk. But you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He saith unto the sick of the palsy, rise, take up that bed and walk. Amen. <laughs> Did get that, huh? Go read it. <clears throat> Hallelujah. That you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sin. Rise, take up that bed and walk. Yeah. Why? Because the same, forget, same sacrifice was given to take care of both sickness and sin. That's why he could say it's the same. It's the same. 
He said it was the same to say to someone, be healed, as it was to be forgiven. Because it was the same sacrifice given for both. We know Psalm 103, verses 2 and 3 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Forget not all of his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who what? Healeth all thy diseases. What, what does Isaiah 53 tell us? About, Isaiah 53 says that by, you know, it talks about the, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by our stripes we were healed. And then 1 Peter 2, 24 quotes that and, and states it this way, that he who bore our, self, our sin in his own body on the tree, that we be in, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let me, let me back up. Christ has been made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Amen? I've I'm, 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 I'm got two scriptures running through my head, got them all tangled up, and I'm, they're all wrapped up, tied up, tangled up, and I'm going to run over here and read it. Who is on self? There we go, I had to get the right started. Bear our sin in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live under righteousness by whose stripes we were healed. So we go through the Bible. Dad Hagen, you said he used to teach a sermon. I've, pre I've preached along these lines before. Uh, forgiveness and healing, God's double cure. What did it say in James? If there's any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. What? The prayer of faith, and the, the anointing of all, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And, and if he's committed any sins, they shall be forgiven him. Now the word save, save there is sozo. It'll heal the sick. It's translate, it can be translated heal. Not only save, but heal. So it says there that the call for the elders of the church, the prayer of faith, and the, the anointing of all, and the prayer of faith shall heal the sick. And if he's forgiven any sin, if, uh, committed any sins, they'll be forgiven him. Everywhere we go, we find healing and forgiveness going hand in hand. Why? Same sacrifice. Jesus carried your sicknesses at the same time he carried your sin. Amen. Oh, glory to God. So he knows, you know, you, you go to the same place to get either one. Amen. Can you say glory? glory. Hallelujah. My iPad is keep having fun keeping up with me. You know the problem. <laughs> it keeps wanting to lock up and switch, click out and all that kind of stuff. Now, so he said, you know, let them know even, the, even if they reject it, the kingdom of God came nigh. Amen? But I say unto you, you will be more tolerable for, in that day for Sodom than for that city. Woe unto you, Chorazon. Woe unto you, Bastidia. For if the mighty works have been done in Tyre and Sidon, which have been done in you, they had great while ago repented and sackcloth and ashes. But it should be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which are exalted to heaven, shall be thrust down to hell. He that heareth you, heareth me. He that despises you, despises me. He that despises me, despises him that sent me. So Jesus commissioned them. What was part of their commission? To go do what? Heal the sick. All right? Then verse 17, And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject to us through thy name. And he said, I beheld light, Satan fall as lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you power, authority, exousia, to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the dunamis of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you, notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rejoice rather that your names are in the Lamb's book of life. So here we have, um, you know, Jesus told, sent the twelve out and uh, told them to heal the sick, cleanse lepers. He sent the seventy out, told them to heal the sick. You know, Jesus himself went round about their villages, preaching in their synagogues, teaching, or teaching, preaching, teaching, and healing. So we know that healing was part of the ministry of Jesus. Actually, it's a third of the ministry of Jesus. You know, we don't have a scripture that says Jesus went round about their villages, uh, teaching, preaching, and hanging out with everybody. There's a lot of things that everybody tells us we need to be doing in the church. It didn't say that Jesus went round about the villages, preaching, and preaching, teaching, and climbing rock walls. We're not against rock walls. But when, you, when we begin to put our confidence in, in, in how to reach humanity into natural things, we put our confidence in the wrong place. It's not your cool idea that's going to get people into the kingdom. You might bring people into the building, but you don't necessarily bring them into the kingdom. Amen. Are you here? Are you gone home? How many are still here? Most of it. Shannon went home. She didn't raise her hand. I said, how many are here? And Shannon didn't raise her hand. What did she say? Shannon, you're here? All right. He's here. All right. 
Had Jesus not healed people, he would not have fulfilled his commission. He would not have pleased the Father. Everything Jesus did, he did in his earthly ministry for needed humanity was a direct revelation of the perfect will of God. Hallelujah. Jesus said in John 5, 19, the Son can do nothing of himself. Then what he seeth the Father do, for whatsoever he doeth, those things also the Son likewise. Jesus is a, Jesus is a representation of the Father. We read that in the first chapter of Hebrews. He being the express image of his person. Being a, a reflection of the will. Jesus was an absolute reflection of the will of God to humanity. So that humanity could see in action God's heart and God's will. Amen. Isn't that right? And so we find that healing is part of the kingdom. Healing is the commission. When they were sent out, they were sent out to heal people, heal the sick, minister life. To, I don't understand why the church re resists supernatural healing so much. It, 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 it uh, baffles me on one level. I, on, 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 one, on another level, I get it because it, what it is, it's human reasonings. It's they don't want to be shown up. They don't want to be, you know, you know, pride enters in. They don't want to be made to look like they don't have something, and so they just come up with reasons why it doesn't work for anybody anymore today. And if it does work for somebody, there's something wrong with them. They're, they're the devil or something. Are you here? You know, Acts says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Now we've got people in church saying that people who heal, lay hands sit and get him healed are of the devil. Because God put it on to teach him a lesson. Wow. I mean, if you can't figure out that's an antichrist statement, because it's directly in contradiction, it's antithetical to the statement in Hebrews, in Acts 10.38. It's a direct contradiction to Acts 10.38. It's got to be Antichrist in spirit, in, in origin. If it's a direct contradiction to Acts 10.38. We have people who say you can't speak in tongues in our, in our churches. You can't come to our colleges if you speak in tongues. That's Antichrist spirit. Well, how do you know? Because even, even when Paul did correction in the church, with the excess and the misuse of, the, of, of tongues and manifestation, he said forbid no man to speak in tongues. And I don't know who you think you are that you can go contrary to the Scripture. Nobody can. Nobody has the authority to contradict Scripture and do what they want to do and walk in, and walk in the pleasure of the Lord. Kind of like that. Guy. I'm going to get to my next point here. My next point is going to be where we're going to wrap it up. Kind of like the man that Brother Hagin was ministering in his church and the man, was, the man wouldn't come to his services. And the, wife, the man was sick. And the wife finally said, Brother Hagin, talk to him. Talk to him. He said, he'll listen to you. He said, he needs to hear what you're saying. So the man came to breakfast, and he, he sat down, and Brother Hagin started talking to him. Said, he said, uh, you, you, know, you need to come to these, you know, these morning services. He started coming, well, i got to go visit this, and i got to go do the radio program, and i got to go do this. And finally, Brother Hagin got frustrated with him. He said, don't you know you're going to die? He said, yeah. But I'd rather do that than, 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 than admit you're right and I'm wrong. But they didn't close the meeting down that week. Why, why preach for idiots? Went to the next church. He said, that man fell dead in his pulpit two weeks from Sunday. Then two weeks later, I got the news. He fell dead in his pulpit. That's just, that's just stupidity. Amen? If you're wrong, you're wrong. If the Bible says, if you, if you teach, if you believe something for a long time, all of a sudden you come across a scripture that absolutely uh, contradicts what you believe, you got to change. I have to change. We all have to change. Amen. There are people who got so caught up in the, in the early 70s, and, I mean, in the 70s and early 80s on righteousness teaching, which really some of the, this new grace teaching is nothing but the excess of righteousness from the early, late 70s and early 80s re, repackaged. You know, I'm so righteous, I can't lose my righteousness. No matter what I do, I'm righteous before God. You know, and they went on to start teaching. I tell you what, you can get so far out there that you, get, you become unrighteous again. Yeah. But we were teaching, you know, we, I say we, but that, 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 that teaching was running around. And people were like, you know, you're just righteous. There's nothing you, nothing you can do to lose your righteousness. Well, I, I guess I had to tear Hebrews out of my Bible then. Hello, Hebrews chapter 6 is going to have to be torn out. 
Paul wrote and talked about Janice and Jambres who become shipwrecked in the faith. And then their names, is that their names? Janice and Jambres? Am I right, Brother Bill? Am I, am I not right? What's the name? Oh, I got, got, okay, I got the wrong guys. Who's the guys that came shipwrecking their faith? Huh? Okay, now everybody's going, I think it was this. Find, somebody find out, let me know. Google it. Don't Google it. They're spying on us. They really are. Hallelujah. All right. So Jesus came to be a representation of the Father. So, we look at Jesus, when we look at you, y'all you know, struggling out there trying to find it. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going I'm, to I'm, I'm slow down a little bit. Y'all found it yet? Yeah, it's those two guys that became shipwrecked in faith. Well, whoever they are, the guys that they wrote about that became shipwrecked in faith, we don't want to be like them, do we? No. All right. <coughs> We'll find out and get that scripture to you. Why? Why? Because it's not in my notes. I'm not. I wasn't really thinking along those lines. Do what? Who? Hymenaeus and Alexander. Yeah, those guys. I would have remembered Hymenaeus. That, that's just a name you keep up with all the time. <coughs> I mean, why didn't they just name? That's right. Why didn't they just name him Frank and Joe? Hallelujah. So Jesus' ministry was a representation of the will of God. But there, here's something that's interesting about the Jesus ministry. When he was on earth, his ministry was moved, but something would move Jesus to do things. Jesus, in Matthew 9, 36, it says, when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them. Because they, they were fainting and scattered abroad as a sheep having no shepherd. And uh, verse eight, uh, Matthew 18, 27, Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him, forgave him. Mark 1, 41, And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand, touched him, and saith, I will be thou clean. And then Mark 6, 27, And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people, and was moved with compassion toward them, because they were as sheep, having not a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. Now the word compassion comes from the Greek supomeno which is where we get our English word sympathy from. Now, understand Bible sympathy is not, I'm so sorry that happened to you. Jesus, see, actually the word means to, to feel or to be, um, to, to bear, to, to, to sense, to take on to your own self the feeling of their infirmity, to actually um, come together and in, 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 in bearing that suffering. He was moved with compassion. Wasn't, it's not just, I, I'm sorry you're going through that. I'm so sorry. See you later. I'm going to watch the football game. You're not moved with compassion. You might be sorry they're going through that. You know, you might have a human, a human, um, it's not even compassion, but regret that they're dealing with that. But, you know, see, when he was moved with compassion, he did something. Biblical sympathy, biblical compassion, simple, simple meno, acts on with what it has in ministry towards the ailment or the infirmity of another. Such as I have, give I thee. Freely you receive, freely give. Amen. And so Jesus was given, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Compassion would come on, he could minister to the people. He'd minister to their needs. He'd minister life to them. Amen. You know, there's a law working in us. It's called the law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Did you know that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus defeats the law of sin and death? Now we, I know we can come with these a couple of different ways. One is, you know, that, that the law of sin and death is if you sin, that, you know, you bring death or destruction to your life. If you walk in, in the life of God, then, you know, the, this is law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus. It brings blessing into your life. But I want you to know it's, 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 it's deeper than that. There's a law working in you. Hallelujah. 
And when you, by faith, uh, participate in, um, in harmony with that law, and see, you can go contrary to laws and they won't work for you. You can run amok of laws and they, and, and they don't work for you. Now, the law says that we in the United States of America are to drive on the right side of the, of the road. If you run out here tonight and get on the interstate and, um, and go backwards down the, on, the, uh, the on, off-ramp of uh, 80, Business 85 on the Holden Road and go the wrong way, you're going to run contrary to the law. And it's a good chance you're going to kill somebody, if not yourself, and everybody in, everybody in both vehicles. Because right, you've run contrary to the law. So, let me say this. Even though there are laws that work, you have to work in cooperation with them. Amen? So the law of gravity. Now, I work at, every time you take a step, you're working in cooperation with the law of gravity. You don't float off into the atmosphere. If you climb up to the top of the, the uh, uh, what used to be the Jefferson Pilot Building down there, I think it's the uh, something financial. So, Anybody know what it's called now? Huh? Lincoln Financial. That's right. Lincoln Financial. It used to be it was Jefferson Pilot before. But you know, if you climb up to the top of the Lincoln Financial Building and jump off, you've gone contrary or crossways the law of gravity. And we'll bury the splatter. Okay? Because you'll splatter all over the place. That's, a tall, that's, that's the tallest building in Greensboro. They can't ever build one taller. That was the uh, deed restriction that they, they got with the city. They, you know, they, they wanted to make sure they were the tallest building forever when Jefferson Pilot had it. And um, so you, can't, you won't be seeing more tall skyscrapers taller than that building downtown. People just got to be egotistical, you know. Anyway, we got to be the tallest building in town. Even if it's only, if it's only 25 stories, we got to be the tallest. <laughs> See, if you work contrary to the laws, they don't work for you. But if you work in harmony, see, if we work in harmony with the law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus, it'll bless you and bring blessing. It'll bring health to your body. Amen. Well, how do I do that? You walk according to his statutes. You obey his word. You do what he says. Now, listen, you don't put the confidence in your obedience. Remember, when you, when you go back and look at Abraham, when he took his son Isaac up to offer him, he didn't say anything about, well, I got to obey God so I can get something. The obedience to the command of God was what he did because he honored God. And when God told him to do something, he did it. And when he did it, God said, because you obeyed my voice, then I'm going to do this. Because you obeyed my voice and withheld not your son, thine only son, then in blessing I'll bless thee, and multiplying I'll multiply thee, you know, and so forth. And of course, he provided his own ram and so forth. But the key was he obeyed his voice. He did not obey his voice in a conscientious, I must obey God in order to get the blessing. Obedience was part of his lifestyle. Obedience was part of cooperating with the laws of God. Even Isaiah wrote in Isaiah 119, I know people say, oh, that's the Old Testament. But it's still a principle. Because we sit, as you read this morning, if you weren't here this morning, I encourage you to go back and listen. As you read this morning from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, that the children of Israel did the things and they were examples to us, and one of the things they did, they were disobedient. So therefore, obedience must be important to God if he writes and makes an example out of Israel and tells us it was written down for you as an example. They were disobedient. That's why this happened to them. So obedience or working in cooperation with the law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus. Well, how do I do that? I honor God. I please God. Amen. I'm not, I'm not out. Listen, it's hard to believe God to get healed when you're smoking dope. I'm just being honest with you now. You're, turning, you're getting up at 3 o'clock in the morning while your spouse is asleep and looking at pornography on the internet and then wanting to pray the Lord to go and come and heal you. Sorry, I got, I got you. See, you're on your computer, you ran across me, you know, and I'm not hot babes from Missouri or something, I don't know. I got the... <laughs> that's just, I got this thing the other day. I'm like, well, I've got this several times. I keep trashing it, and I, and I told them to take me off their list. Sent a little, don't put me on, keep me on your list. You know, you're young. Don't have much time. It's time to have an affair. Just spam in your email. And I go, click, edit, trash, boom. And I got so, I got, you know, so many times in a row, I thought, well, what is their problem? You know, they're just spamming your email. They don't, and so I went down to the thing that says, if you want to be removed from our list, I want to be removed from your list. 
and they still send them. Yeah, that's just, that's just, thank you, Brother Bill. Hallelujah. <coughs> okay, don't ever do that. Well, I, I've been trashing it, throwing it away. I, yeah. I want to live and not die. Now, and that's, I'm not talking about the Lord, I'm talking about Janie. Yeah. <laughs> I want to have to, I don't, it doesn't matter if I come in contrary to, law, to the laws of God in that area or not, that Janie will be the enforcer. That's what she told us when we got married. She says, honey, I love you. If you ever cheat on me, I'll kill you. She said, because the church will forgive me for murder. They won't forgive us for, for, for a divorce, but they'll forgive me for murder, so I will kill you. Yeah, that's right. I got this one. <laughs> Hallelujah. I just want you to know, Pastor Hagen is at Raymond Bible Church having a great time in Oklahoma City. He just told me, or told everybody. <laughs> yeah. Are you preaching right now, Pastor, or what? <clears throat> so, where was I? Come in contrary. Now, if you walk in harmony, so... What do we do if, you know, the Lord's compassionate? The Lord will minister to you. The Lord will do great things for you. He told one woman caught in adultery, he said, you know, where are your accusers? I have none. Go and send them more. He says, I neither do I condemn thee, but go and send them more. Yeah. Amen. In other words, okay, there's forgetting. Let me say this. If you've been sick, if there's been things in your life, repent. Yeah. That, that, that is the, I don't understand the new teaching where we don't have to repent and we don't have to get things cleaned out. We don't have to get things out of the way. Because those things are inhibitors. They're standing between us and God. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Why would we teach people not to get rid of the thing or something that would be an inhibitor to receiving from him? I don't get it. Well, I do get it. They're given over to the devil. They're given over to the... Uh, that, how, many, how many enjoyed that analogy this morning about being in tune, but out, every, out of tune, but in tune with everybody around you? It may, now, it may sit, sense to you, musicians, it makes a lot of sense. Um, <clears throat> for the benefits of those who weren't here this morning, you could go back and listen to the best, or I can give it to you right now real quick. One, one of Nathan's professor told them that a lot of people, especially from the 60s and stuff, when they were dropping, you know, getting high or whatever, would tune their instruments, and because you, when you get high or drunk or, or inebriated, you know, you, you're hearing of music is off. So you think you're in tune. You hear it and it sounds good. It sounds in tune to you. So a lot of those guys would, would, would have one guy, he would get everything in tune to what he was hearing. They'd all tune to him and they were harmoniously out of tune together. But it sounded good. People thought, well, that sounds good. But when you put it up against the right tuning, they were out of tune. They weren't in tune. See, we talked about this morning how that there's a lot of people out there who are hearing doctrines and teachings that sound good, and they're all getting in tune to something that's out of tune together, and it sounds good, but when you put it up against the truth, they're out of tune. They're not, you know, and it may sound good, and everybody be like, oh, that, I love that. I forgot what song, it was, it was an old Marvin Gaye song. <clears throat> I think I heard it through the grapevine. He said, oh, yes, great song, except it's out of tune. Because <laughs> now he hears it. But see, the, the, the tuning forks and stuff they would use a lot of times would be cheap and they wouldn't be in tune themselves. And so they would all tune to it and they, they'd be just, they would get all in tune, out of tune. Okay? And they, of course, because everybody was in the same keys or out, out of tune together, they sounded good. So they had this good sound to it. But when you put the truth right up against it, you know, the, the right note against it, you go, that's out of tune. So the Beatles were out of tune a lot. Especially when they started dropping acid. Yeah, they, got, they got way out of tune. Huh? What's blasphemy? Do you want my sermon on the Beatles? <laughs> Probably want to move back a few rows. So I bring hell and fire and brimstone. All right. We'll have this talk suggestion after church. Hallelujah. The acid-dropping, long-haired, hippie types that brought the devil movement to America. <laughs> Other than that, they were great. The great song, Hey Jude, which was a euphorism for, mer uh, for heroin, shooting heroin. Jude was heroin, was an English uh, slang for heroin. Hey Jude, 
Take a sad song, make it better. You know? And my sweet Lord, Hari Krishna in the background. There you go. The former Beatle. Are we, sit, are we really going to have this discussion? No. <laughs> Hebrews 2.17. And we're talking about the compassion, we're talking about walking, not walking contrary to the law of the Spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus. Wherefore, in all things it behooved to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. He is a merciful and faithful high priest. And then Hebrews tells us, we have not a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. I want to say this. Jesus, and stop, just listen, listen to the words of my mouth right now. Jesus knows what you're dealing with. Jesus has made provision to deliver you from what you're dealing with. If you're dealing with sickness, disease, pain provision has already been made and we have a faithful high priest who has who has entered into supplemino with you he is compassionate towards you and in his compassion he's already carried to the cross your sickness your sin your pain your disease disease is is, is the it could be a hyphenated word this ease lack of ease not at ease you know, you can be uh, in pain and not at ease. I mean, I mean, I mean as if you hurt, it don't, it's hard to rest when you're hurt. It's just, it's just a fact. You know, if, you, if you've experienced any kind of uh, pain or kidney stones or any kind of pain that won't let you rest or anything like that, you know it's hard to rest when you're hurt. I remember the time that Janie had a kidney stone and they, we took her in and, and they were going to let her try to pass it and they, they gave her synthetic heroin. Well, I forgot what they call it, dilated or something like that. It's a synthetic heroin. And um, we're on the way back to the babysitters. And uh, she's kind of leaned over with her head against the window. Now, before she was squirming and everything, she's got her head against the window. I said, honey, are you still in pain? Yeah. But I don't care. <laughs> you know? I mean, you know, of course, she, she did pass that. Hallelujah. And... Um, you know, we went through a bout there for about two years. We, she was, she had kidney stones several times, and, you know, we just had to believe God. They would, she went, that had to stop. And she got one more, uh, about two years ago, she got one more, and we, we found out what it was. We went to the doctor and found out what it was. We said, no, that's got to go. And he said, that's not going to pass. He said, he said, you know, you can try, but it's, it's funny shape. It's elongated, and it's not going, and, and it left. Glory to God. Amen. But I'm telling you, you know, I, when, when you're in a place of pain and you can't get comfort, when there's no ease it's hard on you. You know, you get, you get physically tired. You get emotionally wore out. But I want to tell you something. Jesus, we have not a high priest who cannot be touched with the feeling of our firmities. He knows what you're going through. He feels the pain. Or let me say, he's already felt the pain. And he's already carried it. And he's already provided an answer. So I want you to know tonight, God's not holding out on you. God's not keeping back from you. Amen. Whatever it is you deal with, it's just a name, and every name has to bow its knee to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm going to tell you, you know, I'm not going to tell you a man up or woman up. I'm going to tell you the faith up. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Get your faith strong. Spend time in his presence. Get in harmony with the law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus. Let that law work in your body. Glory to God. Uh, it's not too late. Oh, praise God. I got time. I mean, it's past 7.30, but that's okay. It's not 8 o'clock. We've told this story about John G. Lake before, but it always, it always seems good when you're teaching on healing to me a lot of times. Well, not always, but many times when you're teaching on healing, to talk about that, how that, you know, a Lake was up in, in Africa, and they were dealing with the bubonic plague. And, and an English medical frigate came, came up the river and, and, and ported and cut off, and he was handling the dead folks, and they were burying them. They were just putting them in mass graves and that kind of stuff. And, and they came to him and said, Dr. Lake, you've got to leave these people alone. He said, you, they're, they're, cont they're still contagious. He said, well, I'm not worried about that. And he said, what are you talking about? This is a highly contagious disease. 
he, and he, he, he challenged him and said, well, look, go over here, get, get your little slide from your microscope. And, and somebody had just died, and, and, and it, it was in their lungs, and it, this, this foam and stuff would just kind of just come out of their, their, their mouth and stuff and, as they were dying and stuff. And, and they, he said, give me that. He said, swiped it and put it in their microscope. And they look at that, and they said, well, it's got the bubonic plague bacteria. There it is all in there. That we can see it all running around in there. He said, okay. And uh, he said, let me do this. He took his hand, wiped it, wiped it on the slide, and put it in there and said, what's going on? They said, it's dying on it right before our eyes. And Dr. Lake looked at him and said, my sirs, that is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus overcoming the law of sin and death. Hallelujah. There's a law greater working in me than is in that disease. And I want you to know there's a law in you greater than anything you're physically dealing with. There's a law in you greater than disease, greater in you than sickness, greater in you than calamity, greater in you than oppression. There's a law in you that's greater. Hallelujah. Can somebody say glory? So get, get, stir yourself up. Stir up and allow your faith to rise up. Do not allow the dis-ease or discomfort or pain or sickness to rob you of your faith and tell you. Because let me say, those things have a voice. There are many voices in the earth and none without signification. See, the voice of sickness will tell you, I got you. Uh-huh. <laughs> Do you remember that song? Thought I didn't see you now, didn't you? He is dumbest song. They, it's one of the dumbest songs they ever did. I don't know if it's, if it's probably dumber than uh, Don't You Know About the Bird. Anyway, the bird's a weirdo. Those things have a voice. Forget it, Cap. It's way before your time. <laughs> Those, this ease has a voice. It says, I'm the master. Because you hurt and you can't get comfortable. And, 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 and because of your discomfort, you know, your, your faith is wavering. And so I'm speaking to you. I got you. you, you you're not going to win this. Don't let those things have a voice greater than the voice of God. Don't let those things have a voice greater than the fact that Jesus came and bore your sickness and carried your diseases. That by his stripes ye were healed. Don't let those things have a greater voice that says that the law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus is in you. And it's working in you. And it's greater than the law of sin and death. Amen? The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. You enforce your liberation from the law of sin and death by working in harmony with the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. When you hurt, you still speak faith. When you can't rest, you still speak faith. When you can't, when you can't get to a place where you just seem like you've got a grasp on it, you keep speaking faith. Don't quit. Don't give up. We will reap in due season if we faint not. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, Y'all believe that? Anybody got any prayer calls? Anybody got any prayer calls for us to pray over? Hallelujah. I'm going to pray over these that, that they are now here, so we're going to put them up here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And don't run up here and take them all out. I'll give them to somebody. Listen, if you, if you have a need, this is a specific need, and it's got to be done, come get it. But don't just go grab them. Well, I'm going to go pass them out on the streets. That's not what they're for. Lord, we thank you. Stretch your hands out. We thank you. Glory to God. For the anointing of God. The anointing destroys the yoke and removes the burden. We thank you that the faithful high priest who is who is touched with the feeling of our infirmities, who knows what we're going through, who walked in flesh on the earth and bore our sickness and disease in his body on the cross. And he's faithful to oversee his word, that by his stripes we were healed. Even so much so that he made special provision to get the anointing to people that we couldn't even, in some, in some cases, get to in the natural, physically. So he says special God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. Inasmuch as aprons and handkerchiefs were taken from his body, and they were laid on the sick, and then when they were laid on them, the, the, the diseases went out of them, and the spirits went out of them, and they were made whole. We lay hands on these claws now, in Jesus' name. We thank you for supernatural cures in bodies. We thank you for people being released from bondages. We thank you that the spirits go out, and the bodies are healed, and they are decreed and made whole from the top of their head to the soles of their feet in the mighty name of Jesus. We decree it as so. And thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.